Thank you for being here. If you'll turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 23, and I promise you, Marwan and I did not compare notes, but God has laid some things on both of our hearts, and I can tell that God wants to work amongst our class in a certain way, and I'm thankful for that. And I just want to say that throughout this semester, I've learned something from each and every one of you, and I've really enjoyed just being able to be sharpened by you guys and to learn from you. So in Matthew chapter 23, I'm going to start reading in verse 27. The Bible says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Fear like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Now I remember when I was about five years old, my grandfather passed away. And my dad's a pastor, so I had experience with death and funerals all the time before that. But this hit a little bit closer to home, obviously, it was my grandpa. So I remember going to the funeral home and seeing the casket laying there. He had passed away of a heart attack. And I was walking up with my dad, and he said, you can, it's okay. He saw me looking at him. He said, he said, you can touch him if you want. And I remember reaching my hand up and touching the cold, lifeless hand of my grandfather. I think it was because I felt like I had to because of what my dad said. But it was strange. He was dressed so nice. He had a black suit on. He had a tie on. His glasses were even on, but his eyes weren't open. He was in this beautiful black casket that was half open. I remember thinking to myself, like, it looks so nice, but he's dead. <laughs> and in this passage, what's going on here is Jesus is once again addressing those painful, painfully annoying Pharisees, right? And he's rebuking them for some things that are going on. But one of the things he was talking to them about is the fact that with their religion that they had been practicing for so long, they were dead inside. They were beautiful on the outside. And I have to say, there's a lot of beautiful people in this room. Mainly Caitlin. <laughs> but that's not the beautiful I'm talking about. I'm talking about the beautiful, the fact that there's some incredibly musical people here. That are incredibly talented by the Lord. There are servant-hearted people in here. There are people with the gift of encouragement. There are people with some of the greatest speakers and some of the greatest preachers that West Coast Baptist College has are in this room today. And that's beautiful. But at the same time, if we are dead inside, the Bible likens us to just that beautiful tomb with dead man's bones inside. And guys, I'm the only one in this class who isn't going to be in ministry in about a year or so. I'm a junior. You guys are seniors. Mm -hmm. The pressure's on, guys, to do what's right. The pressure's on to make sure that we are alive and not dead. And I don't think in this passage, when Jesus Christ said, Woe unto you, you know, those Pharisees might have been caught off guard. You know why? Because I think they didn't wake up when they were really young and they started to do all these religious things like tying the scriptures and the phylacteries on them or going and reciting these prayers in public. You know what I thought they were doing? Oh man, I'm excited to learn more about Jesus. I'm excited to learn more about the scriptures. I'm excited to learn more about the coming Messiah. I'm excited to do what mom and dad have taught me to do. And then as the years passed on, they got so good at it. They got so good at it that they took away from the fact of what they were actually trying to do. That's right. And I think when we got here, even for me, here's when it started, when I was in elementary school, and I said, I want to memorize the scriptures. I enjoy Sunday school. And I became a little better at religion. And then you come to middle school and you get more responsibilities and I'm on the bus ministry at church and I become better at religion. And then high school hits and more opportunities open up and I start singing specials in church or I start passing the offering plate and I become a little better at religion. The whole time neglecting that relationship that keeps us alive. And I go to Bible college and I tell myself, okay, now it's serious. Now it's time to get my heart right with the Lord. Now it's time to not be a whited sepulcher full of dead man's bones. But I forget to do that. Get a little better at religion. God provides an opportunity to travel on tour. God provides an opportunity to sing chapel specials or to lead a public school Bible club. And then before you know it, you've become so good at religion and you've never started out that first day saying, I want to do this in my own strength. You never started out saying, I want to do this for me. But we became so good at it. How many were raised in a Christian home? Just about everybody here was raised in a Christian home. Guys, we've been conditioned to be religious. But if we neglect the relationship, that's a problem. 
Now, I think a lot of us picture ourselves in such a way that if Jesus Christ walked into our church in a couple of years, or if he walked in and he saw us serving and plugging away, that he would say, well done. Thank you. You know, and Jesus Christ loves us so much, guys. He really does. But at the same time, how do we know he wouldn't say, woe well, unto you? How do we know that he wouldn't see us the same way he saw these religious Pharisees? And woe unto you is a phrase that was used to cast blame on someone who is evil. Or it was a, an expression of se severe calamity and grief. When Jesus was addressing the Pharisees, he was heartbroken. Because they were doing so much to no avail. Because it was for them. And guys, what is our ministry really about? There's no more time to put off the relationship with Jesus Christ. There's nothing wrong with being beautiful. There's nothing wrong with being beautiful on the outside. But what's going on in the inside? God sees our hearts. When Israel was looking for a king, and they said, and they were looking for King David, and man was looking at him, and he didn't look like he fit the part, did he? He was small, and, and he was like, not the firstborn son and everything. And then... Jesus said, no, no, I look on the heart. And guys, I'm guilty of this. I'm doing so much and not even realizing that all God cares about is my heart first and then what I do with that. So I just want to help you say, okay, yeah, maybe I'm there. Maybe I've gotten so good at religion. Maybe I've gotten so good at practicing this that it's going to hurt my ministry or it currently is hurting my ministry. What do we do? There are three actions to take. The first one is repent. Repent. Marwan shared this verse as well, and I really enjoyed it. Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh, them shall have mercy. Guys, there's forgiveness. There's an abundance of mercy. His mercies are new every morning. There's not a thing that you can bring to Christ where he's going to say, I didn't die for that. But at the same time, you and I understand the difference between confessing a sin to God, knowing that we're going to do it. And knowing it, and that sin, you can say, well, what sin? I don't have a besetting sin. The sin of doing things in your own strength. The sin of being prideful. The sin of neglecting the relationship with the Lord. It doesn't necessarily have to be a hidden sin of pornography or a hidden sin of cursing and lying. It doesn't necessarily have to. It can simply be forgetting how much we need Christ. It's wrong. Whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Like we're talking about, God sees our hearts. He knows when you go to Him and why you go to Him, what you have to say and what you're going to say and what you're going to do tomorrow. But the important thing is realizing that we need to repent of those sins. The next action we need to take is simply remember how much you need Christ. Guys, not many things in your life will turn you from sin other than realizing how much Christ loves you and how much you need Him. Because we're nothing. But the fact that God has decided to use me, or the guys in this room, or Dr. Shetler, or Brother Weaver, it's a miracle, given what we deserve. In John 15, verse 5, the Bible says, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Guys, do we want much fruit in our ministry, or do we want an audience? I want fruit, and for so long I've gone through the motions and many times, and God has recently got a hold of my heart and shown me that if I want fruit in my ministry and fruit in my life, I have to understand that without Christ, I can do nothing. And you have to understand that without Christ, you can do nothing. Only reason any of us made it to class today is because God allowed it. The only reason we sat through chapel, the only reason we've been allowed to come to one of the greatest places to learn ministry in the entire world. And we're going to take that for ourselves and say we had anything to do with it, we don't. Right. Your Christian homes, your salvation, the blessings that we have every single day are only because God has allowed it. For without Him, we can do absolutely nothing, guys. The last thing I want to talk about, an action that we need to take in order to be alive, is receive the Word. Guys, we read the Word a lot, don't we? You do your devotions. You have room devos. You have chapel. You have dorm devos. You have the devotional that you lead in Sunday school. You have all this reading, but how much are we receiving? How much of that scripture do we actually let affect our lives? In Psalms chapter 119, verse 9, the Bible says, 
Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Guys, the key to doing what we're supposed to do and living for the Lord is here and nowhere else. The Bible says, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? It's such an easy explanation by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Taking heed means to listen and pay careful attention to. It's not just reading. It's listening. It's paying careful attention to and applying it to our lives. Guys, we have to put in the work. The Bible says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. The prodigal son, yes, the father was there, ready to accept him and to love him, but he had to go home first. He had to go home first. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to, draw nigh to you. The two verses right before this, we see, um, we see Jesus instructing in our text the Pharisees to be clean on the inside. He was referring to them as a vessel to be clean on the inside and then focus on the outside. And I just have a question for you guys. Do you want to be used by God, or do you just simply want to be seen by people like the Pharisees? Everyone will bow our heads and close our eyes for us just for a moment. I just want to ask a very specific question. Guys, if you would come to the understanding that you may not be perfect, and you may be focusing on your ministry in a sense that you simply, it wasn't your intention, but there came a point where you became a little too religious, and neglected your relationship with God, and you simply want to say, you know what, I, I know that I need to repent. I know that I need to remember how much I need Christ, and I need to do a better job of receiving the word because the scriptures would have the power to change my life. Would you raise your hand just for a moment? We can all pray for each other. You can put your hands down. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for loving us, and thank you for allowing us to serve you, Lord. Lord, I just pray that for each and every one in this room, including myself, God, that you will continue to work in our hearts. And Lord, I ask you to bless our ministries, but I help, please help us to understand, Lord, that that comes through not being a whited sepulcher. It comes through being alive in Christ, Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good. Thanks, all.